53-man rosters are due this Tuesday for all 32 NFL teams, and the Saints have wasted no time getting rid of some notable names. We'll talk about the releases right here on the Straight Up Saints podcast. You're listening to the Straight Up Saints podcast. What is up, Huda Nation? Welcome back inside another edition of the Straight Up Saints podcast. I'm your host, Chris Rosvoglu. And as always, the Straight Up Saints podcast is brought to you by Scott Vickner. Injury lawyers who've been injured in any kind of accident, car, truck, 18-wheeler, or hurt offshore, Scott Vickner handles it all. You give him a call at 504-500-1111 for a free consultation. That's right, a free consultation. They'll always fight for the win. The Saints. Like I said before, making their roster moves to get to 53 guys for week one. And there's been some expected moves, I guess we could say. The, the no-brainers, you may want to call it, with them parting ways with guys that have underperformed. Um, for, for example, I'll bring up some names that they got rid of. Uh, getting rid of, let's see who we got, James Robinson, which again, crowded running back room. Doesn't really surprise me as much. I know some Saints fans thought they were hoping he'd make it, but... That one doesn't surprise me because I think they had Mims, Williams, Kamara all ahead of him. So that's not a total surprise. Uh, we also have them getting rid of a couple of DBs in the room, getting rid of Michael Jacobson, a tight end who really struggled in the preseason finale. So that doesn't surprise me. Shane Lemieux getting cut. I mean, he had one of the worst snaps we've seen in a preseason game. So those aren't surprising. Now, the next two that I'm going to mention and the ones I really want to highlight when it comes to this particular video are, I wouldn't say surprises. But they are big names for the Saints and guys that did play last year and had decent roles last season. So let's get to it. Lou Headley, the Saints punter from last year, is no longer the Saints punter. And all I could say to that is it is about damn time. I do not understand how Lou Headley was even brought back into New Orleans after the season he had last year. He wasn't good. I don't care what the Saints thought or how badass this Australian punter looks. And I have to admit, he looks like a badass. Lou Headley was not a good punter for the Saints last year. He wasn't. And more importantly, when the Saints needed a crucial punt from Lou Headley, he couldn't bring it to them. And I think it's almost fitting. And again, I, I feel terrible that guys get cut because this is their livelihood. I can't imagine how hard this is. But Lou Headley in the preseason finale has a brutal punt that gives the tight end short field. They score the game-winning touchdown. I almost feel... Like that was just the perfect fitting and closing end to this just tenure for, for Headley, which has been brutal. And I don't know if the Saints have their guy, Matthew Hayball. I really don't. And truthfully, Hayball is going to have to win over a lot of people by just performing well. But he can't be worse than Lou Headley because Lou Headley wasn't just a guy that was inconsistent. When he decided to be consistent, it was consistently bad in the crunch time moments, and I hated that. So Saints cut Lou Headley. That job, that battle's over. Maybe you look around. I know Presley Harvin got released by the Niners. Maybe that's the name they'll look at. But Lou Headley is no longer here in New Orleans, and I think that's a good thing for the Saints. I think they had to make a change at punter, running this back again. Would have been a massive mistake. So Lou Headley, he's on the way out. The second name I wanted to focus on, safety Jonathan Abram, former first-round pick from Mississippi State. Look, I thought he had moments last year. I thought there were moments where Jonathan Abram looked good, and I was like, man, is DA that good at coaching DBs that he's going to get quality football out of Jonathan Abram? Like th Those are thoughts that I had at the end of last season because Abram had some nice moments where he flashed his potential. And he comes into this summer, really good opportunity to win the starting job. And he just doesn't do it. And I think similar to Lou Headley, his closing act with the Saints, kind of fitting. If he just blocks on that Samson Nakua return on the missed field goal, they probably get seven. Instead, they get zero. And you can't have that lack of effort, that lack of awareness in a preseason game when you're a guy that's fighting for a job on this team. Now, I will throw this out there. He doesn't hit waivers because he's a vested veteran, so he could just come back to the Saints if he'd like to. And Tom Pelissero reported that the Saints want him back on the practice squad. So maybe he does return to New Orleans. But I think it's pretty clear any chance of this man being a starter for the Saints, that's out the window. And Will Harris and Jordan Howden clearly were valued above him. I'd imagine Harris will be the starter opposite of Tyron Matthew. And if Howden can prove the coaching staff, you know, that he, he's capable of being the starter during practice and then maybe increased reps in game days, 
then maybe he'll get the job. But Jonathan Abram also released, and I uh, can't say it's that big of a surprise for the Saints. Saints still have a lot more moves to make, some interesting ones to make, whether it's Kendra Miller, what do they do with him? Isaiah Foskey, what do they do with him? Uh, Rico Payton, really talented, undrafted rookie corner. We'll see what happens with all those. But for now, Lou Headley and Jonathan Abram, the biggest names released by the Saints today, but they got more work to do, which means we got more work to do on the Straight Up Saints podcast, the destination for the Houdat Nation.